Well, hello there. Didn't expect you to show up so early. Come on in. Let's have a chat, shall we? Hi there. I'm Dustin Shrum. I'm the adjunct trumpet instructor here at Linwood University, and I'm here to do a video clinic for you at this year's virtual jazz festival. Today we're going to be talking about how to become a versatile trumpeter. But we got to ask one question first. What is versatility? Do you know? Go ahead and jot it down, maybe in the notes on your phone, or if you've got a paper and pencil, write it down. I want to know, what do you think versatility is? Go ahead, I've got time. Well, what did you say? I'm sure everybody's got their own definition, and you're all correct, but let's take it to the Google Mobile. Okay, here we are in the Google Mobile. Let's see what we get if we type in the word versatility. Google tells us that versatility is the ability to adapt or be adapted to many different functions or activities. That's a pretty legit definition. That makes a lot of sense. But what the heck does that mean for us trumpet players? Being a versatile trumpet player is one of the most important characteristics of trying to build a career in music. Whether you're trying to do music full time or whether you're just trying to play trumpet for fun, for some extra money on the side. Today I'm going to share with you 10 tips for becoming a versatile trumpet player. Let's get into it. Now we don't have very much time and there's a lot to get into. So this video is going to be more of an overview. But if you would like to learn more about how you can become a versatile trumpet player, then go to www.dustinshrum.com slash contact and send me an email or give me a phone call and let's chat. Tip number one to becoming a versatile trumpet player. Be a solid player. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? You need to learn the fundamental and advanced techniques on your instrument. Are you able to sound awesome when you play loud or soft? What about when you play high or low? Long or short? Can you double tongue? Can you triple tongue? Can you flutter tongue? Can you growl? Can you shake a note? Can you lip trill? You know how to play first part? What about second? Third? Fourth, can you transpose? That's all great, but how are your scales? All these different techniques are really important to becoming a versatile trumpet player because you're going to need to have all of them in your tool belt when you're trying to play the many, many different styles of music. Here are just a few of the many different trumpet methods and etude books you can find out there. I'm going to close up on each one of them so you can get a good look as to what you might want to think about putting in your own personal trumpet library.
Number two, learn and listen to the many different styles of music. As a musician, I currently play in the following styles regularly. In jazz, I have to play big band, small group, duo, bebop, hard bop, latin, fusion, bossa nova. On the classical side, can you play in a concert band? Can you play in a symphony orchestra? Can you do solos? I also regularly play in hip hop groups, R&B, Motown, Soul, Funk, New Orleans Brass Band, Rock and Roll, Brazilian, Salsa, Blues. There are so many styles of music out there and you need to listen to them all. Put on those listening ears, go searching through Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to music and go explore the many different styles of music. You'll be surprised what you like. And the more styles that you can fit your trumpet playing into, the more opportunities you will have to play the trumpet, to play trumpet with other people, and to make some money playing the trumpet. Tip number three. Learn to improvise. I cannot say this enough. If you cannot improvise, you will lose many opportunities. Can you come up with something as simple as a good horn part on a song that doesn't normally have horns? That's improvising. Can you solo on cue? Can you be in a band and they say, we want to hear a trumpet solo there, and you say, okay. It's really important that you do that. If you can't solo, if you can't improvise, you will lose those opportunities to someone else who can. So be ready to. Tip number four. Play well with others. Trumpet players are known to have huge egos. Story time. Here's my story. I once got a phone call from a local band leader of a hip hop band. He said that he got my number from a recommendation from a couple other musicians in town. He asked them, do you know a trumpet player who can play high and loud? And they said, call Dustin Sharon. Well, when he called me, uh, I said, yeah, I'd love to do the gig. That sounds like a lot of fun. And he said, hold on a second, hold on. You're a lead trumpet player, right? I said, yeah. He said, so you can play high and loud? Yeah. Well, that means you're supposed to be a jerk. You don't sound like a jerk. Well, I laughed and I said, it's okay, man. When you get to the gig, you're going to like what you hear. So long story short, don't be afraid to talk yourself up a little bit. Especially when somebody's trying to hire you for a gig, that's basically a job interview. You need to express your strengths. And it's okay not to be super humble all the time. But don't cross the line. Don't be a jerk. No matter how good you play, no one will call you if you aren't fun to work with. Remember, this is still a job if you're trying to make money playing the trumpet. Know when it's time to be a team player and know when it's time to be a leader. And remember, you are visible on social media. So, you should watch what you say because people are looking to hire you through social media. Tip number five. Know your lineage. Who were the legends of the past? Who are the legends now? Who are the legends in your area? Learn from these folks. Read the biographies of those who have passed. Read the biographies of other musicians you know worked with the trumpet legends. And try to get an actual trumpet lesson with those who are still around. If you go traveling, look it up. See who's teaching at the local university, or if there's a local legend in that town. If you're going to New York City, there's a lot of good opportunities. Try to get a lesson. Don't be afraid to pay for it. When you take lessons with multiple different trumpet players, what you're able to do is assimilate many different ideas and some of the same ideas all together that are going to help develop your trumpet playing 
and your ability to be a versatile trumpet player. Here are just a few bits of recommended reading materials that I would suggest to you. While reading these books, you may find yourself to be inspired. That is what reading is for. Not only will you learn about the history and the lives of these great musicians, you'll also learn how they interacted with each other. You'll learn about other great musicians in these books, and that may prompt you to purchase the books about those other musicians. In the end, while you're reading these things, it should also inspire you to want to practice more, to make yourself a better, more versatile musician. Speaking of the legends, let's hear about what some of the local and international trumpet legends of today have to say about being a versatile trumpeter. Take it away, folks! Hi, my name is Adam Hookie, and here are my top three reasons why it's important to be a versatile trumpet player. Number one, a versatile player is a better player. You can learn skills and techniques associated with one style of music, and I can use those on a completely different style of music. Sometimes this even makes certain things on the trumpet a little easier to do, which is always a big plus. Number two, potential to make more money playing trumpet. Pretty simple to understand. If I can play lots of styles well, I have much more opportunity to make money playing the trumpet than if I can only play one style of music well. And my number three reason, it's a lot more fun to play lots of styles of music. If I could only play one style of music, I would be bored and I wouldn't enjoy it. But I enjoy playing all the different styles of classical music, all the different styles of jazz music. Let's not forget playing in a blues band, a rock band, a reggae band, playing with hip hop artists, playing with country artists. There's so much opportunity out there and there's interesting ways to find out how the trumpet fits in with all those different styles. Thanks. <laughs> This is trumpeter Herman Mahari. I'm in Passau, Germany, here for a gig. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about versatility. Um, I think, obviously, it's important from a perspective of, 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 of in, in terms of business, right? Like, can you be able to get all kinds of gigs? But I also think versatility is important in terms of uh, musicality, being able to play different styles, because in reality, a lot of the styles inform each other. Um, they have a lot... They, they have a lot of the same roots, and they come from the same places. Um, and it's important not to be so pigeonholed um, in, in your musicality. Uh, so briefly, that's why I think versatility is important for a trumpeter. Hello, this is Stanton Kessler on behalf of my buddy Dustin Schramm on being a versatile trumpet player. If you love music and you want to make money, there is a simple formula for success. Number one, embrace all genres. Number two, do your research and be informed. And then number three, develop your skills in each genre. The most important thing is to do as much listening as possible and listen to everything. All music informs you. Notice that all styles require a different approach and work to imitate those who are at the top of their fields. Try to be a good section player. Strive to be a great soloist. Strive to be a great lead player. This is how I have survived in the music business as a trumpet player for 50 years. So have fun, good luck, and see you later. Versatility is essential in order to improve or even exist as a musician. 
Versatility is not only the ability to adapt to different styles and genres seamlessly. It is fundamentally based on maintaining an open mind and a willingness to adapt to new and unique situations. Versatility is based on listening, listening with big ears. Hi, it's Andy Tishner speaking to you today about versatility as a trumpet player. This is a really, really interesting and important skill to have as a trumpet player, to be able to play any style of music. It's cool to play jazz, big band music, classical. Uh, I like to play pretty much anything, any style. And a couple things help this, to being able to play literally any style, to switch musical hats, if you will. Having a really good practice routine, okay? Have a good warm-up. No matter, that's more important almost than anything. No matter what you're showing up to play, be warmed up, okay, and be ready to go. But having a good practice routine that covers things like playing with a good sound, playing in tune, playing with good technique, okay, having a good practice routine. Also, listening to many different styles of music really helps inform me when I'm having to play, say, a Broadway-style show or a jazz gig or a big band gig or a classical gig if I'm playing with an orchestra, okay, Listening to many different styles of music really helps your versatility as a trumpet player. So really good trumpet fundamentals, okay? Good practice routine, having a good warm-up, and listening to many different styles. Those are really going to help you as far as versatility on the trumpet. Hello. I'm Alan Beeson. I'm a trumpet player living in Pensacola, Florida now. I've been asked to say a few words regarding versatility as a trumpet player. I think versatility as a trumpet player is just as important as it is in any other walk of life. If you're a truck driver, if you're a teacher, if you're a cabinet maker, whatever walk of life you might be in, the more versatile you are, the more helpful you're going to be to your peers, your employer, your band director, and most of all to yourself. If you haven't had experience playing in orchestras, brass choirs, brass quintets, jazz groups, rock bands, uh, Broadway shows, how would you know what you like? It's like a friend said, how do you know what you're going to like if you haven't experienced it? So uh, practice versatility in everything you do and certainly in trumpet playing as well. Thanks for your time. Hi, my name is Clay Jenkins. I've been asked to speak briefly about the importance of being a versatile musician. Being versatile to me means, in a general sense, you can fit in in classical music, Baroque, jazz, pop. You can handle any of those musical situations. In a more specific sense, as a jazz musician, if you're versatile and informed, that means that you can fit in with an early jazz group, big band, more bebop, more modern, modal, odd meter. So that means being versatile means you'll be asked to play more often. It also involves a bit of craftsmanship. You need to be a good sight reader. You need to be accurate. You need to be able to play in tune. You need to have a good sound. So all those things add up to having depth as a musician, which gives you more choices and options and makes you more versatile. Mike Rodriguez and I think it's important to be a versatile trumpet player because it'll keep you active as a player being able to play in a section and play a solo and uh, play different styles of music and also learning these different genres of music will enrich your musicianship so I say keep an open ear and keep learning Hi, my name is Alfonso Horn, and I'm here to talk about versatility. As a trumpet player, for me, that's always been a command of the instrument itself over fundamentals. One of my very first teachers always preached about fundamentals and having a mastery over the instrument itself. 
And so our very first couple years was just working on fundamentals, long tones, slurs, articulation, scales, before I dived into great works of classical or jazz or any other style. And I got my degrees from Florida State in classical and jazz music and then went on to Juilliard to study jazz. And throughout the, all of that time into today, like I'm always, I would say 95% of my time is on fundamentals. And so that led to different career opportunities from playing at Carnegie Hall with the American Symphony Orchestra to playing in jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra with Winter Marsalis to Broadway to SNL to Colbert Show, all of these different opportunities because I believe that like having a great control of the instrument can help you play any style that you dive into. And beyond that, versatility as a person is very important. That one of my first lessons was with um, Marcus Roberts and I, at FSU at least. Yeah, one of my first lessons at FSU was with Marcus Roberts. And he asked me, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I was expecting you to tell me what I should be working on. And I'll come back next week and I get, I bring it back to you. And he was like, no, don't come back to my office until you figure out what you want to do with your life. And so for me, that was an opportunity to dive into what I, beyond music, what do I actually want to do with my life? What are my passions? And one of my favorite mantras is if you can feed the passion, the passions will feed you. And so diving into music, but also what else am I interested in? For example, for me, it was theater. I was really love theater. I love singing. I love dancing, all of that kind of stuff. And so for me, that led to Broadway opportunities in New York. And from there, I worked in creative teams to be compo to be a composer for different theater shows or be an arranger for different theater shows or just playing with Alan Stone on pop shows where I'm dancing and singing in this workout. But all, what all of that led to was me figuring out who I am and what my passions were as a person, as a musician, as an artist, and that feeding my career. So I would say versatility comes as a musician and as a person. They come hand in hand. Tip number six, learn to be a great teacher. You can be a professional musician and a full-time teacher. I myself teach at three different schools on top of being a professional musician. I teach full-time as a high school band director and I teach part-time as an adjunct trumpet instructor at Lindenwood University and as an adjunct trumpet instructor at Jefferson College. There's many different ways to make money in music and be able to play and make money that way as well. Teaching is a very solid gig and a very reliable gig. And during times like this, during COVID, I could have been devastated if I solely relied on my income as a performing musician. But because I am a teacher, I was able to continue receiving paychecks throughout this unprecedented time. Oh my God, he said that terrible word. Unprecedented. <laughs> Teaching private lessons is a great way to make extra income and to continue passing on the knowledge and lineage of this great instrument. If you plan on teaching lessons, you gotta know your rates. For a professional musician, the average rate is about $50 an hour, okay? If you're younger and you haven't quite made your way on the scene yet, don't charge that much. People won't pay you that much, but learn to build it up. Here's a little bit of math for you. If you taught 10 trumpet students and they all took hour-long lessons every single week and you charged $50 an hour for each lesson, you would make $24,000 a year just in the revenue stream of your private lesson studio. Hey, that's a pretty good hunk of income. Don't you think? Every performer will at some point be asked to teach in some way, whether it be clinics, master classes, or lessons. Be prepared and passionate about teaching. If not, you might stunt your career. Tip number seven. Know your gear. As a trumpet player, there are many, many different things you might need to become more versatile. There are many different types of trumpets you might need. There are many different types of mutes you might need. There are many different types of mouthpieces you might need. And there's tons of miscellaneous gear that's necessary and some not necessary. So let's talk about all those different pieces of gear you might need to become a more versatile trumpet player. Here are just a few of the trumpets 
that you might think about wanting to have in your arsenal to make yourself a more versatile trumpet player. Of course here at the bottom we have our trusty B flat trumpet. Moving on up, if you play church gigs or if you play in an orchestra, it's very important that you own a C trumpet. It's always fun as a soloist to be able to play some of the wonderful cornet pieces that were written on a cornet. Also as a soloist you may want to look into an E flat trumpet and a piccolo trumpet. There are many works that are written for all these trumpets and if you want to become a professor one day or a performer one day and play recitals consistently you may need to own and be able to play very well all of these different trumpets. The flugelhorn is also quite a necessary instrument to become a versatile trumpeter. It's used in many styles of music. If you play in a big band you should always have a flugelhorn ready. There's some beautiful flugelhorn solos. There are so many different mouthpieces you could try to play when learning to play the trumpet. Every mouthpiece has got a different characteristic, a different sound, a different use. Learn what these different mouthpieces do for you when you're playing and maybe what type of styles they might best be fit when you're playing. Have them in your trumpet case and have them ready for when you want to use them. If you go to a professional trumpet player's house, most likely they're going to have a clear bin of some sort with many, many, many different mouthpieces. Some that they probably haven't played in years. Who knows? They might even hand one off to you. It's always cool to try out different mouthpieces to see what they can do for you. Having a good arsenal of mutes is very important for a versatile trumpet player and may either help you keep or lose a gig depending on what you do and don't have. So let's go over the various types of mutes there are. Starting over here on the right, we have the cut mutes. It's good to have a few different varieties of mutes because um, every mute has a different sound, a different feel, and may even fit differently in your trumpet's bell. Moving on to one of the most common mutes, the straight mute. Then the harmon mute. One important thing to note about the harmon mute is that you should always keep the stem of the harmon mute. Although most of the time you'll pull it out, there are some instances where you will need that stem. This little guy is called a pixie mute. He usually works in conjunction with the plunger mute. Pixie mutes were used in the early days of big bands a lot in the Duke Ellington Orchestra. It is important to have a plunger mute at all times. This is technically called the Trixie mute made by Humesenberg. It goes along with the Pixie mute. You can also find a very cheap sink plunger at the hardware store. Make sure not to use a used plunger. Then you have your bucket style of mutes. This is called the Easy Buck. This is actually called a Finch mute or an Acousta mute. Finally, you have some special mutes like this one, the solo tone mute. It's got its own st sound and is used in its own styles. You don't use it very often, but it's good to have. Other useful pieces of gear include the trumpet stand. It's good to have a few different types of trumpet stands. You might want single trumpet stands or multiple trumpet stands for those gigs where you need to play multiple instruments. Mainly gigs that you might need to play either B flat and C trumpet or B flat and flugelhorn. Another important piece of gear is the music stand itself. You will find yourselves having many gigs where you may need to have your own music stand. My suggestion, get a portable compact one like this that folds up in many different ways and leave it in your car. That way you always have a music stand on hand. 
Another fun piece of equipment is the mute holder. Especially if you're having to play gigs standing up, it's, it's pretty annoying having to bend all the way over to the ground to grab your mutes over and over again, especially when you have quick mute changes. Having a mute holder right there makes it easy for mute changes. Then, of course, there are trumpet cases. There are so many different styles of trumpet cases out there these days at varying prices from $50 to $500. When looking for a trumpet case, you want to ask yourself a few questions. Do I want my trumpet case to be able to hold multiple trumpets for those gigs where I use multiple trumpets? Do I want my case to be able to roll around? Do I want my case to double as a backpack? Do I want to be able to just easily sling my case over my shoulder? Or am I just going to carry it? All these questions and more. Is there a place for the mouthpieces? Is there a place for my mutes? Is there a place for my music? Is there a place for my other gear, like my trumpet stands and my mute holder? So many variables go into having the right trumpet case and it's important to have many different types of trumpet cases for the different types of gigs you might have. You can change your trumpet case with the gig just make sure you have all the equipment you need when you go to the gig. Tip number eight. Learn to be a great business person. To be a great business person, the first and most important thing is that you must communicate well. If people send you emails asking you about being able to play a gig, you really need to try to respond within 24 to 48 hours of receiving that email. If not, you might lose the gig. Understand that the easiest way to reach out to the largest amount of people is through social media. So learn how to create a good social media presence so you can let people know when and where your performance opportunities are so that they can go watch. The better you build up an audience, the better your career is going to build. Scheduling is extremely important. So keep a good calendar and make sure you check it every day. One of the easiest calendars to keep is a Google Calendar. Almost all of us have a Gmail account or can create one for free like that. Make sure that you keep up with your calendar every day. Whenever somebody asks you to perform and you say you can, immediately put that in your calendar and maybe even set a couple of notifications. I like to set a notification for a week before, a day before, and quite possibly an hour before. Keeping up with a good calendar and watching it is going to help you uh, prevent yourself from double booking. <sighs> double booking. Double booking can be a giant killer on your career. When it all of a sudden becomes a week out from a gig and you look at your calendar and you realize that you took two gigs that happened at the same time and now you've got to decide which one you're going to keep and which one you're going to try to push off onto somebody else that is going to hurt your reputation. It's going to show other people that you aren't organized and maybe that you don't quite care about their gig as much. And therefore, they might not call you anymore. And even worse, they might talk about you to other people. You gotta watch out. Definitely make sure to keep a good reputation. Learn to build a good website. I myself use Weebly.com to build my website, you can go to www.dustinshrum.com to go check it out. Have a nice website with a home page with a really great picture of you. Have a page that has a photo gallery. Have a page with some of the music that you perform on. Maybe another page for your original music that you've written yourself. Have a page talking about what you can do in regards to teaching lessons. And finally, make sure to have a contact page with either a contact form that they can fill out right on your website that will send you an email or have your email address and phone number listed. You can see a great example of that by going to www.dustinshrum.com. Another really good 
trumpet player's website I think you should check out is Nicholas Payton. Go check out Nicholas Payton's website. It's very professionally done. I'm sure it's done maybe by uh, a certain company, but it looks really good and it's got a really a lot of really cool functions on it. So I would suggest going and checking out Nicholas Payton's website. You must network to become a versatile trumpet player and to become a professional musician. You need to go to shows and don't be afraid to talk to people. Who knows? Maybe when you go to a show and you meet some people in that band, later, when you go to another one of their shows, they might ask you to sit in and play with them. Not only is that fun, but that starts to get you out in the eyes of the public. And it might even get that band to want to call you as a substitute musician one day if their regular trumpet player can't make the gig. Finances. Ugh! I know, it's a rough word. I'm sure you take uh, personal finance at your school at some point, and it probably wasn't the most riveting class. It takes a right type of teacher to teach personal finance in a fun way. One thing that's really important is to at least keep an Excel spreadsheet of all of your income. It's really good for you to keep up with what money you make, because eventually you're going to have to pay... Sorry, taxes on it. Which leads me to my next point. Know how to do your taxes. Taxes are very confusing and they change constantly. So my suggestion to you would be to find a really great tax professional who knows how to deal with musicians. The best way to find that tax professional is to reach out to other professional musicians. Reach out to people that you know play around a lot and you know they probably have to deal with taxes on a large scale. See who their tax person is. They would gladly give you their contact information. Tip number nine. Getting the gig. Getting a gig can be very difficult at first. So I'm going to talk to you about one of the methods that I used in my own personal life that I find works pretty well, especially for young folks. Start by taking some free gigs. When you're young, you might not have as much experience as most musicians. And because of that, people aren't going to be willing to pay you very often. So, my suggestion to you would be to go out and find some certain community groups, whether it be a community concert band, a community symphony orchestra, or even a community jazz band. Go and play in those groups. Get in there. They would love to have you in there just to play, and you'll start getting some experience playing. Sooner or later, you're going to get tired of playing free gigs, especially as you get older, into your 20s, and you're running low on money. So here's a method for you that I found worked really well as I was a young musician. I had a rule for myself. My rule was that if it was the first time a person was asking me to do the gig, I would accept the gig for little to no money for the networking opportunity, for the opportunity to go out, meet new musicians, and have them hear my playing. After that, if I was asked to play another gig with that group, I would then begin to start requesting compensation for the gig. Eventually, you will get to a point where it won't be worth your time to play gigs for little to no money. And really, as you get older and as you build up your reputation as a professional musician, it's actually going to be less professional to take a gig for free. You see, there's this concept in the musical community where if you take a gig for extremely cheap or for free, you're lowering the value of all the musicians around you. So, we have to come together as a community of musicians to let people know that if they want musicians, they have to value our art and the effort and the many years of practice that we've put in to be at this point as a musician. So eventually you will get to a point where you won't be playing gigs for free anymore. Eventually you will get to a point where you might even look at a gig and wonder if that's even worth your time and effort. Maybe you have other things at some point, like a family or like friends, that you value more during that time than playing that gig. 
That's when you get the opportunity to pass a gig along to another friend of yours. It's good to share the love. And if you don't feel like you need to play that gig, then don't. Share the love with your friends, but make sure that you are recommending good musicians. Musicians that are as good or better than you. If it's a gig that maybe doesn't pay very much, give a younger musician the opportunity. Give them a chance to get their feet wet. In the end, just like teaching private lessons, you should keep this rule in mind when you're going to take a gig. Does the gig pay at least $50 an hour? If the gig pays $50 an hour from the time you leave your house to the time you get home from the gig, that's a pretty good gig. I would take it. If a gig pays less than that, then you have some other variables you need to think about. Is the gig with a group that's going to help get your face out in the music community more? Is the gig with a group of people that you really like and you're fine with playing for a lesser amount of money than you normally would? All these variables go into making the decision on how you're going to get the gig. But like I said, when you're young, start out slow. Find community groups, find churches that would enjoy to hear you play. And as you go and play these gigs, and you go and meet new musicians, you will find more opportunities, as long as you're following the tips we've already talked about in this video. Tip number 10. Composing and arranging. To be a versatile trumpeter, and just a versatile musician, it's important that you know how to compose and arrange, which means that you know how to write music. I'll give you an example. I once played uh, an Aretha Franklin tribute gig. There were about 30 songs that we had to play, and I was pretty sure that none of the other horn players were really taking the time to figure out the lines, and I only thought that because of the rehearsal we had. So I took the opportunity to tell the band leader that I would offer to write horn charts for all 30 songs so that we could sound better as a group. Because I did that, that band leader offered me 150 extra dollars for the gig for the time I put in writing the music. It's important to learn how to write your own music and to arrange other people's music. That's a way so you can adapt other music and your own music to groups that you want to play in. And this will then expand your musical vocabulary. Well, there you have it. Those are my 10 tips to becoming a versatile trumpeter. I hope you've gotten a lot out of it, and I know there's a lot more we could say. So as I said earlier, please go to www.dustinshrum.com contact if you'd like to learn more about how to become a more versatile trumpeter. Thank you guys so much for coming and listening to this today, and I hope you're having a great time at the Lindenwood Jazz Festival 2021. And you know next year, we're going to be back at it, and we're going to keep on playing, folks. So keep it up, everybody, and have a wonderful, wonderful life. Bye.